What is the best travel camera gear that money can buy? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I am getting ready to head on a big camera trip. I'm heading to Sony Kando uh, in just a couple of weeks, and I wanna show you what is in my camera bag that I think is the best video production equipment that money can buy. And no, this is not necessarily the most expensive, because just because something is expensive, doesn't mean it's the best, so let's get into it. This is my same, some of this stuff you will have seen before if you've seen my other what's in my camera bag videos, uh, but a lot of this stuff is new and I've been refining this over the last few weeks and I'm very, very excited about it. So let's just check the outside compartment, which has nothing in it because I didn't put anything in there. I forgot, I, I thought there was a little thing in there. The first thing that I'm bringing with me is not necessarily why you might think I'm bringing it with me, um, it's the Apple iPad. I use an iPad Pro 11. Now what I use this for is I edit a lot of my thumbnails on here and I have been dabbling with video editing on this um, using LumaFusion, which is a fantastic paid app you can get that gives you almost desktop level editing features inside of an iPad. Um, but I haven't been using it as much recently. I updated to the iPad OS beta, but it's been giving me some problems um, there's just some like little things that they'll need to fix before they do the actual release and then maybe I can use this as my full-time thing But this is gonna be like watching YouTube videos or like chilling out in my downtime or playing that alto skating game I play that game all the time. I love it. What else is in this top flap? That is it for the top flap. So I sometimes I put more. Oh, that's not all for the top flap This is my favorite light of all time. You may notice that there's no colored light behind me today because my colored light is this one. Now this is the Luxly Viola. Now they don't actually make this specific model anymore. They have an updated 2.0 version that I've never used, but this light is expensive. It was like 200 bucks, but it's full RGB. It's very bright, but what's really nice if you start getting into like product photography or you start doing stuff that you don't need a lot of light for, it also can go really dim. Like this light that I've got right here that is a cheapo, just like LED light, it doesn't like, it never goes like that dim. So if you don't need very much light, this is great. Plus it has this little like, this man, this diffuser is just beating the heck up because I bring this thing with me everywhere. But this diffuser combined with this light can give you very nice soft light of any color. I highly, highly recommend this light. Like this is my favorite light of all time. And I'm seriously considering buying another one, even though it's really expensive. They have the cello too, which is like the bigger version, uh, but it's even more expensive. But when I originally bought this, um, they didn't have like the diffuser for the cello. They do now, so that might be my next purchase. I love this light. So I take this with me everywhere. That's why it's all scratched up and beaten to all heck. Plus my bag, the Low Pro. You guys ask me what this is all the time. It's a Low Pro Tahoe something. I don't remember, I bought this like on sale from Best Buy like two years ago, and it's just been my bag. It's nice, it's durable, it works. So let's talk about what my actual editing rig is gonna be. That's my ancient 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch. This thing is like the base model. It's the lowest model you could get because when I started the YouTube channel, this was like something that I had to pay for like out of my own personal bank account, so I had to get the cheapest. Uh, and actually, I've got it upgraded to like the newest OS system, and with some of these other additions, it's actually pretty good at editing 4K, so I don't actually anticipate doing that. When I'm traveling, I just shoot in 1080p to make it as easy as possible because this thing also only has like a 120 gigabyte hard drive, which is nothing, nothing, so yeah. I like it, it's got the older keyboard so you don't have to worry about the keyboard failing. I've also brought this with me everywhere, it just works. It lets me edit with Final Cut Pro 10, just like I do on the desktop back there. It's wonderful. I might upgrade this at some point, but I don't see a need to upgrade from it yet. So let's talk some of the smaller things first. So again, you always need memory, you can never have enough battery life for memory, so this will be my memory card container. You can see all my micro SD cards, all of my main SD cards are currently in use right now. Hmm, fancy that. So you can get something like this, it's a little case that you just put all your cards in, lets you organize and keep them safe. I don't know that I would throw this in any water, but this gasket does keep it clean-ish, even though it's gross in there. All my stuff, like I beat my equipment up quite a lot and I'm always taking it, throwing it in this bag, moving it around and all that. So this stuff gets beaten up, so this gear works. To help out with the editing, um, I'll be using this LaCie drive, so I'll take everything, I'll shoot with the cameras, I will put it onto this hard drive for like my long-term storage, and then I've got a solid state drive that we'll see here in a second, which is what I will use to actually edit from the computer. And uh, these little things, they're relatively cheap, they're durable enough. It's really just a big brick of extra storage, which is why I keep this around. 
We will need Sony batteries for the light that we just saw. The Luxley Viola does take the Sony, the bigger Sony batteries. The F550, this is a smaller one. I will also have a couple of the bigger ones. ND, I'm only gonna bring a few lenses with me, so I will bring enough ND for each of the lenses. I have them all labeled. I, my philosophy is not to buy one nice ND. My, my philosophy is to buy as many ND filters as possible and not use stepper rings. I know I'm not in the popular opinion on that one. Let's talk audio though. So audio is the most important part if you're gonna be making videos. So I like XLR microphones, and so I will be using this. This is the Panasonic DMW XLR1. So what this does, and we'll see it in a second, this goes on my Panasonic GH5, and it gives me two XLR adapters that just plug straight into the camera. It doesn't need a battery. It doesn't need anything else additional. It just works to give you very, very good audio. Is it as good as like a specialized preamp, like a Mix Pre 3? No, but it is fantastic and it is convenient, and that's what matters. And when it comes to like audio devices, I will be using my standard tried and true AT875R. Now this is a shotgun microphone that I have been using for a, over a year. Like this is, when you normally hear audio inside of my videos, it's from this microphone. If you've ever listened to the podcast I did for a couple of weeks, it was done on this. This is one of the most versatile, budget-friendly, best microphones you can buy. If you are trying to dabble in XLR microphones, get the Audio-Technica AT875R. Like it is fan -ta I can't say enough good things about this. When it comes to, well, let's keep looking at the small stuff. When it comes to audio, if I'm trying to be like off camera or something, or I'm not in like a studio where I can have this hooked up to the camera, because for me, the GH5 is a studio camera because the autofocus is just not there. And I prefer having a camera that has good autofocus when I'm out and about. So the audio solution I will be using on the camera if I'm not gonna be, if I'm gonna be out and about is the Rode Wireless Go, which is a really tiny, really powerful lavalier microphone system. Uh, but the way that I use it, you can see right here, there's a microphone built right into the thing. I just clip this right to my, it's easier when it's cold in a jacket, which I will be bringing a jacket with me. Hopefully it will be cold enough for it. Uh, I just clip it right here or I'll clip it on a jacket and it works. Is it the best audio? No, but it gets really usable audio with almost no effort. I mean, it is, I think that these are better than using like a shotgun microphone on the DSLR like the YouTube standard is anymore. I really like these just because they're so easy to use. I know people have had problems with these. I've never once had a problem with these. I bought these myself. Rode did not give these to me. Um, and these are fantastic if you want good audio on the go. If I'm in an emergency situation though, I will also be bringing what is my favorite audio recorder of all time. I've done plenty of videos about this one if you want to see it. This is the Zoom H1N. Now what is so fantastic about this thing is it's a few fold, right? So it is a great microphone if you wanna use it by yourself, just like as an interview thing, like blah, 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 blah. Works great for that. A Couple other things you can do is you can plug a lavalier mic straight into this thing and use this as a lavalier system. I've done this on plenty of videos in the past. But the coolest thing, I don't have the problem with it right now, but if you have a camera that has a microphone in port but doesn't necessarily have the greatest preamps, you can use this to be the preamp for the camera. And this is awesome because it's got like actual physical gain control. It's got all sorts of great settings inside of here. And this is a good audio preamp. So you can use this to fix the audio in just about any camera. I highly recommend this. Like if you don't buy anything else in this kit, buy one of these, it's amazing. For tripods, I've got a couple tripods that I'm gonna be bringing with me. One is gonna be this monopod. This is the iFootage Cobra 2. I've been using this monopod for another year. Like this, a lot of my gear I've been using for a long time. Um, and this thing's great because as you can see, it's just a quick twist and it goes up and down. I've also got the Komodo fluid head uh, on the top of it, which you don't necessarily need. But if you wanna use something to get like nice smooth pans and tilts, stuff like that, you can use this. But a new addition that you guys I don't think have seen before and I don't know that I've talked about is, I bought a whole bunch of these little adapters right here where you just screw these onto all of your cameras and you use these as quick release plates and then you can just quickly adapt all of your gear to all of your stability, like your tripods, your sliders, stuff like that. I have six of these right now and all of these, all my cameras have these on them right now except there in here. I love this little connector right here. It was cheap. I bought it very cheap on Amazon. My other, no big surprise here, my favorite uh, most used tripod of all time, that's the original Manfrotto Pixie. I also have the new Manfrotto Pixie, but I don't like it as much. Um, this is just a staple of what I do. I've also brought this thing with me everywhere. It's just, it's easy to use. You put the camera on there. You can use it as a vlogging tool. You can use it as a tabletop thing. If I'm going anywhere, I'm bringing this with me. We've also got another battery. 
another backup audio cable because you can never have enough backup audio cables. I was at a conference last year speaking and I was trying to hook up, we was actually filming on one of these Z6s, um, and I was trying to film myself like with my wireless system at the time. My microphone cord broke and I was kind of screwed. So I always bring extra microphone connection cables so that I don't lose anything when it comes to audio. But you guys are like, ah, whatever, Everyday Dad, you talked about all your support equipment. What cameras are you bringing? That's what we're excited about. So I'm bringing my two favorite cameras of all time. I love these two cameras. These are the two best cameras you could buy today. The first one is the Sony a6400. Um, you've, I've made so many videos about this and I'm probably gonna make another one just because I darn love this thing. This has the best autofocus I've ever used. I've used Nikon cameras, I've used Canon cameras, I've used Sony, everything. This a6400 has hands down the best video autofocus ever. It's amazing. I never have to worry about being in focus. And the benefit of this, because the a7 III has pretty much the same system, but the a7 III needs a monitor. This has a flip up screen, so you don't need a monitor. It is its own monitor and it just works. I'm also trying out this new lens I've never really used before, but uh, this is the 10 to 18. It ends up being like a 15 to 30 equivalent lens, so it's nice wide angle for vlogging. It's got OSS or optical steady shot built into it. Basically, it's got stabilization built into it. So these two combined together actually will be my vlogging rig um, from now on. If I'm gonna do any like vlogging, it will be this with the Rode Wireless Go plugged into it. And it just like, it works. Like this is one of the best camera platforms I've ever used. I love the a6400. Anytime people ask me what camera they should get to do like talking head YouTube videos, it is the a6400. I think it's better than the a7 III. I think it's better than just about everything else. Except, except, oh, I'm also bringing the kit lens. I really like this kit lens. I know a lot of people don't like it. It's not the most optically sound lens in the world, but it works and it works very well. And it's so small and it gives me 16 to 50 equivalent, which I mean, you don't really need much more than that if you're gonna be just doing like out and about by yourself, vlogging or doing camera stuff. But let's talk about my favorite camera of all time. This is the Panasonic Lumix GH5. This is the best camera ever made, hands down. This is the best camera I have ever used. This can do everything. It has one negative and that's autofocus and you don't even need to necessarily worry about it. If you've got a cell phone, there you go. You can use the Panasonic app. You can control everything about this camera from the app. Did I put it in here? Oh, I'm bringing along the 12 to 60, not the good Leica lens, this is the kit lens I got on the GX9 that's been doing all of my B-roll, but I'm gonna bring this along if I do need like a 12 to 60 or 24 to 120 equivalent zoom. If I need a more zoom, this will, be the, this will be the lens to do it for me. Or my main lens that I've been doing with all of my studio work is the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. Now, this gets a lot of, like people talk about this a lot for the Sony cameras because it's a fantastic lens. It ends up being a 24 millimeter equivalent, but I use this in the GH5 because it becomes a 35 millimeter equivalent, which is what we're using right now. 35 millimeters has quickly become like my favorite focal length for talking head video stuff because it's wider, it gives you a more sense of like what's going on in the video as opposed to like 50 or, I think 24 is a little too wide, I think 50 is a little too tight. I like 35 and so combine this together and then you combine that with this and there you go. This is a professional level video package. The stabilization inside of the GH5 makes this prime lens easy to handhold. This gives you fantastic audio quality and I bought all of these used so this was, let this package right here is less than two grand. Yeah, a pro level camera for less than two grand. It's got a flip out screen, works really well. I like taking pictures on the GH5. I know people are like, oh, microphone fairies, it doesn't take good pictures. False, this thing takes fantastic pictures. It's got a lot of really great modes in the side of it, like post focus, which lets you take a picture at 1.4 and then it takes lots of pictures along the way of the entire gamut of the focus range and then you can combine them all in post and then make it one photo that's perfectly in focus with the sharpness of the lens as you go along. This camera is the best. You, I've said it so much. I made a lot of videos about this too because it's so good. It's got great stabilization, great colors, great audio. You, the audio focus is terrible. Auto focus is terrible, but you don't use the auto focus. I love this camera. I, those two cameras, I use this for pretty much everything that I can. And then if I need good auto focus, I use the Sony a6400. With these two cameras, you can do everything. Everything is within reach and is doable because you can do it. But yeah, this is all of the gear that I am taking to Sony Condo with me. Much like when I went to CES, I brought a whole bunch of camera gear. I don't actually anticipate carrying all of this stuff. The only camera I anticipate carrying around with me is the a6400 because it's a Sony event. I don't want Sony to like 
I think they beat you up if you bring a Panasonic camera. We're gonna, this is just gonna hide out in my room with me. <laughs> but yeah, what gear do you guys use when you go traveling or when you go to events? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to have a conversation about what kind of camera gear we are all using because I love talking about it. I love finding out more gear that I could go buy because I buy an awful lot of camera gear if you didn't know that. Thanks for watching.